Hello, the the whole goddamn world. It's Luandil here, the leader and the instructor of my life programming school. And right now, as you guys can see, these are so far, these are the problems that I've tackled. Again, at any point in time, feel free to let me know in case there's something that you don't quite grasp. Okay. Mm, okay this is the problem on hand i've already given you guys a first solution now it's time for me to give you a second one i mean one which is more convenient in more than one way okay so without any waste of time i am getting started as you can see the only thing that i've done is to retrieve a user's input now let me create a uh, what mm, uh, let me create a character okay just like before i'll i'll call it two hex let me call it that if decimal number is less than zero or decimal number is greater than 15 what i want to do in that case is to exit my program okay i'll simply go I'll display that message there. Okay. And then go system dot exit. Put a zero there. Now, assuming that our, it's a, a better idea again to put that at the bottom because we don't want to declare it if the user input is incorrect we only want to declare that variable if the user input is correct okay mm, what else now oh in simple terms what i will do is i'll make use of the ac code table you know the one that contains uh different characters commas asterisks uh hash signs i mean a lot of characters are there and each character has a corresponding decimal value i'm afraid i don't have that table here with me and i'm on fly and as you can see that it's not like i can go online and show it to you guys but the table we can take advantage of it and i'll show you in a moment what do i mean I can simply go if decimal number is less than 10 if this is the case just like before two hex will be string dot value of decimal number okay the character it oh we haven't covered methods damn why did i 
do that in the previous solution i'm so sorry you guys i know in the previous solution that is precisely what i did it was right here i decided to use you see that right there is nothing else but a method okay so i sort of forgot that we haven't covered methods methods yet okay so the easy way maybe for me would be to to make that a string as opposed to a character okay okay once i'm done doing that that way i won't have to invoke any methods okay uh, but that one right there is something that you're probably familiar with right and if you're not you're gonna it seems like you're gonna have to do a little bit of his research okay so now if mm, now if our user input is greater than or equals to 10 then i'll do the following the hex the two hex uh the two hex variable will hold let me copy and paste that and change it a little bit you see, instead of passing whatever there was given to us over there, we will oops. We will say whatever number there was given to us plus fifty-five. Okay, and why fifty-five? It will make sense. You see, there are 55 characters preceding what whatever character that the user that uh, we will get as the result of a user giving us whatever decimal number. Right? And I know it's kind of confusing. It'll, it'll, it will make sense once you we want to try to get that ASCII table I told you about. Okay, so we'll go decimal number plus fifty-five. However, that's gonna give us some number, right? It's not give us. It's not gonna give us an alphabet. Uh, maybe say A, B, C, D or f it will give us some number however that number we're gonna have to type cast it into a character in order to get the corresponding word alphabet again if it that if what i'm saying doesn't make sense to you at all i get it trust me without the table the one i'm talking about it I hardly think there's anyone in the whole universe. I doubt it there's anyone on earth knowing uh, the table by head. Perhaps there is, but anyways, the point is, you guys, uh, it can be pretty hard to understand what's going on here without the table here without the table okay so what i want to go what i want to do is to say the hex value is and then i simply go to hex to hex now let's see what we get Remember, whatever number we pass 
to our program if it's less than 10 it gonna go it's gonna get displayed the way it is you see now i'm trying something like 10 uh let's try 11 11 is b 12 corresponds to c 13 is d so on and so forth and then finally if you try maybe something out of this range we're gonna get that again the trick here has to do with the fact that we added a number 55 to whatever that was given to us by a user and then we casted the results into a character in order to get the corresponding answer that's gonna be it for this tutorial you guys cheers i'm gone